Hello, my snacks. Welcome back. Today's stories, oh, folks, manipulative families are a strange bunch. Though I suppose it's, in this case, it's manipulative people in general. You'll see what I mean. Now, this first story starts out rather obvious, but by the update, there is like a snowball effect that happens by the end of it. So this story began in April 1st. My friend keeps on talking about my ex in front of my fiance. So I'm 29 male. My best friend Jess, same age but female, keeps on mentioning my ex, 29 female, male as well in front of my fiance and I am thinking of cutting her off. I want to know if I am overreacting or if Jess is in the wrong. For context, Jess and I went to the same high school and the same college. We were friends in high school. However, since we both went to the same out-of-state college, we became best friends since then. We have always been there for each other during the best and worst times. However, things have always been platonic and she is more like a big sister to me who made sure I stay on the right track. Now, I have only been in two long-term relationships so far. One was with my ex, Lisa, for seven years. We met in college and dated all through our college years. Now, Lisa and Jess also became good friends too. After college, Lisa and I just grew apart and we had different goals in life. I became boring after college as I was working on my PhD while doing a full-time job. Lisa broke up with me as, well, she wanted to party on weekends while I was home studying. Now, I was heartbroken, but I don't think I ever blamed her or had resentment towards her as I understood my decisions were selfish and should not hold her back from having the best life she wants. Jess always stood by me and comforted me during that time. Jess and Lisa were good friends and Jess always kept on telling me that Lisa loves me and will be back one day when I am ready. Of course, I foolishly held on to that hope and stayed friends with Lisa. Now, that was until I met my fiance, Yang. After I finished my PhD, I got a nice job in a big tech company. Yang joined our team a year after me. We started going out for drinks and dinner and we started dating seriously pretty soon. We are happy together and financially in a great place. Needless to say, I stopped talking to Lisa after I started dating Yang. Yeah, you can see where this is going, can't ya? I proposed to Yang a year after we started dating and got engaged last year. But Jess has been acting weirdly since we got engaged. One of the first things she said to Yang after we got engaged was how I had planned the same thing for Lisa, proposing on our local hiking trail. It was a bit off-putting that she was bringing up Lisa, whom I broke up with almost five years ago on such a happy occasion. However, Yang asked me not to spoil my mood, as she felt Jess was just commenting on how I had that plan in mind for years. But since then, every time we meet, Jess without fail brings up Lisa and how the things I am doing are all the things I had planned with Lisa. This happened when we bought a house, planned for vacations, etc. Jess always starts with some nostalgic story and then brings up how Lisa and I were so happy together. She is still good friends with Lisa and keeps giving me updates about about Lisa and how great Lisa is doing at work and when no one is asking for it. It felt like she was painting a rosy picture of Lisa to Yang and telling Yang that she would always be second to Lisa. Yang told me Jess's comments bothered her and I also felt the same. I have brought this up with Jess many times and asked her not to do it. However, she says she will try but since I dated Lisa for seven years, she would be part of many stories from the past. Also, she asked me why talking about Lisa bothers me if I still have feelings for her. Well, don't have feelings. I have reduced hanging out with Jess as a result. However, she is close with my mom and is always invited to all our family parties and holidays. So I talked to my mom and sister about this and they feel I am overreacting. They feel Jess is just telling stories and since the stories are mostly from college days and later, Elisa will be a character in that story. They also feel I should not be bothered by Jess mentioning Lisa since we broke up a long time ago. I feel that it's disrespectful to Yang as she doesn't need to hear about all the fun Lisa Lisa and I had when we were together and how we were planning to get married. I mean, do you think I am the a-hole to stop here or is Jess truly acting out of line? Now, strangely enough, despite Jess clearly hinting that she is curious about OP's interest in Lisa, if there's any, some people still actually theorize that Jess might be into OP. That's why she's asking about his interest in her friend. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> That's some interesting mental gymnastics. Then you got some other weird thoughts like, Yet another reason why it's pointless than a guy being friends with a female. 
of being her friend serves no purpose to you anymore because you have Yang now. I mean, here, buddy, hold this. It'll help project you better. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is I cannot fathom women being nice to me without them clearly wanting to sleep with me. It, it, it's just how it has to be. So from people with more of a sound mind, they suggest obviously separating your fiancé from this friend and just the fact that Jess has such weird advice for OP when Lisa was no longer into him because, you know, he was growing up. This idea that, oh yeah, you stick to studying, buddy. She can go sleep around and hook up with everyone she wants. You just sit there twiddling your thumbs and she'll come back to you when she's ready. You know, when she's, when she's bored of everyone else. Now, OP responds to this, informing us with some stuff that Jess thought they were 24 when they broke up and she... She always justified that Lisa was young, and it's natural to date around before you settle down. And she also encouraged me to do the same, actually. But after my breakup, I decided that I would not be in a relationship, uh, based on what happened to the previous one. And I never dated anyone until after I graduated. With ultimately the consensus being this idea that, yeah, look, the moment she ever does bring these things up, just clap back at it with the idea that, yeah, okay, I've met my fiancé now and I honestly couldn't see my life being as positive and memorable if I'd done any of this with Lisa. Like, oh yeah, I was going to plan to do that with Lisa, but thank God she screwed that up. I'm so much happier with Yang. And then aggressively make out with each other. And the moment Jess walks away in discomfort, you follow her. You follow her while you make out. Assert your dominance with your love. So with that consensus that Jess needs to be cut off at this point, we come to the update just a week ago. Starting with a quick recap over things and mentioning how this last month has been absolutely insane and you are about to read why. After my post, I decided to talk to Jess and gave her an ultimatum to not speak about my ex Lisa again. I know Jess and Lisa are still friends, but I was uncomfortable of her comparing my fiance Yang with Lisa all the time. I broke up with Lisa five years ago and she is nothing but a faint memory in my past. Jess kept on defending herself and telling me that I was with Lisa for most of my adult life and it's hard to tell any stories from the past without including her. But then she also blamed me for being emotionally childish and just forgetting about Lisa when she was with me for seven years. And finally, Jess agreed that she will not bring up Lisa in front of Yang. And I should also not treat Lisa as she does not exist since she is still Jess's friend. So I informed Yang about our conversation. Now, although she was appreciative about it, she said that I did not need to do it and she knows how much I love her and every time Jess brings up my Lisa. She feels sorry for Lisa that she let a guy like me go. Damn, Yang. That emotional maturity of yours is... Whew, you're making me blush. So Yang went to visit China two weeks ago for a month as we plan to get married in her hometown. She is taking care of her shopping as well as preparations for the wedding. Jess invited me to her house that Friday for dinner as I was home alone. Note, I am also good friends with her husband and we were all just chatting and drinking in the living room. But around 7.30 p.m., the door bell rang and Jess excitedly went to open the door. To my surprise, it was freaking Lisa at the door. She was all dressed up as if she was ready for a date and came in. I had not seen her in person for almost three years and I was shocked to see her. She sat down and started making small talk with me. I was extremely uncomfortable and went into the kitchen to talk to Jess. I was angry at her and asked her what was going on. She kept on telling me that it's been five years since the breakup and to get over it and be nice to Lisa. She said Lisa was excited to meet me and she thought we were all adults and could have one fun evening together. Yeah, okay. The fact you are adults is what makes it inappropriate to have a fun evening together. Saying you're all adults it doesn't make it okay. It makes it worse. There's more implications with that. I mean, anyone over the age of 23 can vouch for this, I'm sure. But teenagers, we never grow out of that. As we get older, we just have to deal with more responsibility and get more exhausted. That's it. <laughs> we had a fight and I told her that she should not have invited Lisa after our conversation the other day. And I do not want to be friends with her anymore. I went into the living room and politely excused myself and told everyone that I had a work emergency and had to leave early. Lisa looked sad, but I genuinely felt uncomfortable to be made to hang out with my ex without my consent. I came home and called Yang. I have never seen her more furious. And she told me she is not comfortable with Jess anymore as she has some agenda that we do not know about. I mean, it's different to talk about Lisa, but to invite her without consulting is not okay. I also felt the same and I called Jess the next day and told her that she crossed a line and I was terribly upset with her. I stopped taking her calls and ghosted her. I also told my mom and sister about the whole incident, which as it turns out, ends up being the worst decision. Last Sunday, my mom called me for lunch. When I got there, I saw Jess was already there. I told my mom that I do not want to talk to Jess and I can't stay. 
However, she asked me to sit as they all wanted to talk to me. Now, I have a glutton for punishment and decided to hear them out. My mom started with how Jess has been there for me all these years and has only my best interest at heart. She kept on telling me that they are the three people, mom, sister, and Jess, that love me the most. Jess started saying how she felt that I was making a big mistake and not having to hear what Lisa had to say. She told me... That Lisa was my first love and Lisa is now ready to settle down and we can pick where we left off. She reminded me how broken I was when Lisa left me. Yeah, five years ago. And how life is giving me a second chance. My sister also chimed in and said how they all liked Lisa more than Yang and how we both looked so great together. Finally, my mom started saying how our culture was so different than Yang and it is hard for them to relate to her. I asked them in what way and my mom said that they did not understand what Yang says sometimes and have nothing in common with her. Then my uh, mom asked me to think about how Lisa and I would have such wonderful looking kids. While if I marry Yang, our kids would look so different. I started getting their drift and I probed more. My mom told me how our kids would look Asian with small eyes and not like any others in the family. I never understand this racist argument because I, look, I, I've never seen a half Asian who didn't look hot. Like I wish one side of my family had Asian genetics, man. This, I mean, the skin buff they get, oh man, it's like natural moisturizer. So I asked my mom if she cared about my kids looks more and not about how smart they will be since Yang has a PA. HD. Well, she blew it off, and I realized she just did not want me to marry Yang because she was Chinese and not white. My mom told me to forgive Jess, and my mom asked Jess to talk to Lisa on my behalf and asked her if she would be interested in getting back together with me. And my mom was adamant that since I loved Lisa so much, gotta emphasize the D there, look at the D, mummy, the D, I should be happy and pick up things where we left off as that is the best for everyone. I have never been so angry and may have said a lot of unkind things to all of them before I left. Well, that's a weird way to spell honest. Strange. But I am so depressed right now. I not only lost my best friend, but also I'm not sure how I can move on from what my mom said. My mom and sister did raise me and that is the reason where I am today. However, I cannot get over how racist they are being and how they were just pretending to like Yang all these years while actively working on breaking us up. I have been so shocked that I have not told any of this to Yang so far. I might wait for her to come back next week and talk to her in person. Again, uh, thanks for everyone for all your messages on the last posts as they helped me a lot to think through the situation. My life is more screwed up than I could imagine now and I cannot imagine how dejected Yang will feel after hearing all this. Yeah, as cut and dry this might seem that, hey, family's being racist, cut them off. They're disrespecting your partner. You gotta understand this is coming from a space where all this time, Opie genuinely thought that people who raised and loved him were decent human beings. They've shown that to him for almost 30 years at this point. But suddenly you find out that it's not your love and happiness they care about. No, no, no. It's it's your sperm. It's the sperm and eggies. That's all they care about when it comes to you. Like how demoralizing to learn that the main thing your family cares about is how and if you breed. And also what a lovely little welcoming back to Yang. Hey Yang, th uh, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed China. Um, my family doesn't exist anymore. Either way, it's definitely for certain that this is a mom that is never going to get to see her future grandchildren. Over to some more backstabbing family member stories. Am I the a-hole for leaving my wife over a computer? Now this one began way back in January, got an update in March, and now has another recent update that really brings everything together. So I'm 26 male, and I've been married to my wife Emma for four years. She was a social work major who I met in one of my gen ed classes. I explained to her that I was a mechanical engineering major. She then asked if I could tutor her in math, and that's how we began dating. Afterwards, I decided to get my master's in Japanese to help me gain more career opportunities. My wife thought it was a silly idea and said that she wouldn't be funding it, so then we decided to keep our finances separate. It wasn't a big deal since I was still working anyways, I just had less free time. So she was making more than me during this time. Now it paid off and I recently landed a high paying job and with that came more stress due to me having to travel to Japan often. I've been really wanting to get into gaming so I invested in computer parts costing around $1,500. But once I took the parts out of the box, my wife noticed the receipt and asked how I could be so irresponsible with my money. She assumed I still made the same amount but when I told her that I make triple that amount, she began giving me the silence. 
silent treatment. Now, during this time, I began to notice my things were going missing. I wanted to go fishing with some friends one time, and when I was looking for my rods, uh, she must have noticed and said that she had given them to her uncle. I told her not to take my stuff without asking, but didn't mind too much because they were old. So I just bought some more. Oh boy, just going to enable her behavior. Okay. Another time I was about to go to gym and I was looking for my pre-workout mix. I always keep three jars. I luckily had a can of Monster and that helped. I asked my wife when she got home from work and she said she gave them to her cousin? I asked her to reimburse me because they cost $50 a jar. She said that I make enough to replace them and just ignored me for the rest of the day. One day when she thought I was sleeping, she was talking to someone on the phone, explaining how she's going to move my parents into our house. But she hadn't explained this to me. We only have three rooms. One is her office, one is my office slash game room, and the other is our bedroom. She told me that the person on the phone, who I assume is her sister, that she's going to give my gaming setup to her brother to make room and that I'll get over it eventually. So today, I left work early to catch her in the middle of her plans. And when I walked in our apartment, her and her brother were then placing everything into a box. I asked what was going on and my wife, whose face was pale, said that she was uh, cleaning when her brother came by. I asked him, did he plan on taking my computer? Of course, he denied. So I went in the room to get the iPad we share and I looked through the texts on there and it clearly shows my wife telling him when to pick it up and to deny that he had it. I told him to get out and asked her, why does she think she's so entitled to my stuff? Now I have never yelled at her and I guess this scared her because she began to cry. She ended up packing a bag and went to stay with her sister. While she was out, I picked up a lock for my office. Her sister texted me, calling me an a-hole. I'm beginning to think I could have handled this better, so I'm looking for advice. My advice is to run! Run, boy! It's the China Bone tea set all over again! But some other valid advice. You're not leaving her over a computer. You're leaving her for repeatedly stealing and lying to you. I mean, not to mention her shaming you for buying things you enjoy with your own money. But of course, there might be two sides to this story, as some comments comes to an interesting theory. Well, she shouldn't take or steal your stuff, but what aren't you telling us? Anyone else noticing this started when she found out how much money OP makes with his new job? There's something missing to this story. I'm thinking OP said no to some kind of expense, or the wife has been frugal for a while, assuming they were not as financially stable, or just some part that's missing to this puzzle as to why she has so much resentment towards OP ever since he mentioned three times more salary. Oh, it doesn't excuse her behavior, but you didn't tell your wife about your salary increase until she asked. There's something you did that you either aren't telling us, or you don't know what you did because she didn't steal any of your stuff till you mentioned the salary increase after however long you've been working there. So you're guilty! And somehow, I don't know how or where, but I'll find it! Welcome to the Salem Witch Trials, OP! I mean, even some people are, again, blaming you, the OP for the wife not wanting to share finances. Which I'll say, I'm actually in support of that sort of thing. Oh, I guess more so a hybrid of sorts. Like, you can have a joint account, but also, yeah, have separate finances. I personally find it so much more easy to track my own spending and budget, but I'm not having to, like, take into account all the spending someone else has been doing with the money we are all sharing in the pool, you know? Just have a joint account of some sort that you can both put money into in frequent intervals. I mean, that's just my preference though, so I don't know about you, do you? Are you someone who's more into the sharing of finances at all times? Do you find it untrustworthy when it's encouraged to be separate like this? Let me know what you think. In the meanwhile, we'll move over to the March update, where the sister gets a bit more involved and the rest of Emma's family mutually getting frustrated with her. After about a week staying at her sister's house, Emma called me and asked if we could meet up. I agreed and we met at a park. She apologized for everything and said she thought she was doing what was best for everybody. I asked, what if I just gave her expensive makeup to my sister? She admitted that she would be upset. I then asked, why did she think it would be any different for me? She didn't have a reason and her sister told me how unfair she was being to me. We decided to give it another chance and she moved back in. It was going good until she started moving her things into my office. I asked her what she was doing and she explained how she needed the room for her parents. I told her no and that's not happening. I grabbed her things and placed them back into her office. I told her that they could move in but my space has to remain untouched. On top of that, we need to determine how bills are going to be paid because, well, she called me a selfish jerk and then ran back to her sisters. I guess her sister told me or told her that she was being inconsiderate once again and 
Then, apparently, they got into an argument because the sister refuses to take their parents in and said that she's tired of hearing about Emma's problems. I agree with her sister. She has four kids. I guess Emma is hoping to be the fifth. Her sister called and told me everything and said that Emma went to her parents' house. I tried to call her, but she ignored my phone calls for two weeks. I decided I couldn't live like this, so I filed for divorce and handed to her at her parents' house. So now she called and begged me to forgive her. I told her, I'm not sure if I can. She refused to sign it until we go to counseling, but I refused and said she had two weeks to suggest that. So now I live alone. Uh, she still refuses to sign the papers, but that doesn't stop the divorce. It just makes it harder. So yeah, a clear example of someone not at all learning anything despite being confronted for their dis like, terrible behavior. And like after being called out for it, she's still trying to do some sneaky stuff and disrespecting his wants or needs. But hey, look, then again, if you suddenly find out your partner is earning three times their normal salary, I, I imagine that this person is someone who does a lot of budgeting themselves. You'd feel a bit betrayed and a bit disrespected. I'm not at all excusing the thievery that she's been trying to do here and manipulating the space, but I can understand if she's behaving like this because she herself doesn't feel respected. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. Does that is that making sense? At least I feel it would until we come to the April update. Here's the truth, folks. Why was she stealing? Why was she trying to do all these manipulative things? Drum roll, please. So Emma was cheating on me. The rods and pre-workout didn't go to her family. It went to her affair partner. I found this out because when her parents invited me over to their house. See, when I got there, Emma looked sick. Like she had an eaten for days. Her parents asked why I kicked her out and that me neglecting her is taking a toll on her mental health. Emma sat there silently crying. I explained that I never kicked her out and Emma refused to talk to me for weeks before I sent the divorce papers. I showed them the text of me practically begging her to come home so we can talk it out. So I asked Emma, what did she tell her parents? Her dad chimed in saying that I went back on my word about letting her brother stay with me. But I asked what were they talking about? And the reason we got into an argument is because they were supposed to move in. Suddenly, Emma ran to her room before she could be questioned. Her parents explained that they were happy with their home and had no plans to leave. I then showed them the text from her sister, Mary, explaining how Emma was mad at her because she couldn't take her parents in. They were confused. I was confused. So her parents called Mary to have her explain. Her brother, Jake, was also there. But then Emma just explained everything. Emma was cheating on me. Jake caught her and kind of blackmailed her. So he was a freshman in high school and we live in a better district where basketball recruiting is more likely to happen. Emma thought I would be more inclined to say yes if I thought it was her parents moving in. Emma's parents called her downstairs immediately. She was listening and began to tell her side. Her affair partner's wife found out, so he thought that relationship was over because she kicked him out of the house. He then convinced Emma to quit her job because he got a job opportunity in a different state. But he was secretly meeting with his wife and they got back together. He hadn't put in his two weeks yet, so his life resumed normally. Emma, on the other hand, didn't even put in her two weeks and just stopped showing up, so she was fired. And when her affair partner told her it's over, she went into a depression and tried to call me so we can go to counseling. So there you have it. She didn't suddenly call because he handed the divorce papers. She suddenly called because her rebound had rejected her. Hell, not even a rebound. Like, she wasn't even broken up at this point, but she clearly was trying to be. I told her it's over and asked that she sign the paperwork so this divorce can go smoothly. She begged for another chance, but I just left her crying. Her parents informed me later that night that Emma was in the hospital from an OD of pills. I just ignored it. Her dad is asking that I come visit to show I care. I texted back, I don't care. I don't know what to do now. The moment I found out about the affair, I fell out of love. But... I feel cruel not going to visit her. Now, I can understand this. Of course, you've been in a relationship for a very long time with this person. You're going to naturally have an instinctual love for them, regardless of what they've done to you. It's kind of why you hate them in the first place. Opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference, after all. But some great advice to help combat this habit, especially if you've been cheated on. Just visualize and remember the fact that at some point, with their affair partner, they would have stopped or paused their kinky times together to change positions or have a water break. And in those moments of pause and clarity, she went 
right back into him. Or onto him. Uh, you know, anatomy. However it works. Point is, I don't know about you, but I don't think that OP owes this person anything. I mean, this goes above the whole rules of, like, morality in terms of being a, just a respectful person to someone who clearly went through a very horrifying experience of ODing on pills. But, I mean, it's just like any other kind of person who's a toxic ex. You know, it's a manipulation tactic. Sure, they're being emotionally distraught right now that they go through this, but that was their choice. It's the same sort of cringe as those kind of guys who'd say they'll, you know, do something to themselves if their girlfriend breaks up with them. It's it's just another plan to, like this comment says, to wish OP back. That's it. Anyway, friends, with those big blah, blah, stories out of the way, I think we'll end today's video there. Thank you as always for watching. Love your face, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.